What is going on YouTube? This is Ask the Group. So I'm going to review the 2012 reissue by Future. Basically this project is called Pluto 3D and it came out in the fall of 2012. So the thing about this particular product is this is a few months after like Future's hit album from early 2012 which was called Pluto which is a pretty big deal. This is because Future was a huge deal back in 2011 with his various mixtapes and mixtape hits as far as I predict like kind of went. He definitely tore up the mixtape scene in 2011 and that continued into 2012. Pluto is a multi-platinum. The album Pluto is a multi-single album as far as that pitch count particularly went up. I want to say it got to like the fourth, fifth or even sixth single. There's I want to say it got to like the fourth, fifth, or even sixth single as far as that particular kind of happened. Plus, it had some other singles that got some radio airplay, like Parachute, some of those type ones. So, it was a pretty big deal around that particular time. It's the same thing with this particular product. The only thing about this particular product is I just didn't appreciate the lead single as much. I'd have to say it was kind of somewhat like I liked the fact that Kelly Rowland was on this particular single, the Never End single, as far as that particular one, but it just didn't hit as heavily as like the original one I'd have to say in particular, which was kind of a disappointment. But other than that, I'd look at this as a pretty heralded project. It's going to get about the same score as like Pluto, the original kind of did in particular. I'd say I basically felt, well, maybe Pluto, I remember giving back in January, February, I remember giving that project like an 8.75 out of 10, pretty much on the cusp. I remember saying that it was like an arguable classic, I would have to say definitely impact of it it was one of the bigger albums of 2012 and the early 2010s as far as that particular kind of went is filled with trap cuts and it was a commercial rap album that helped transform trap into like a more commercial and modernized kind of format which i still think it continued to do that on this particular project but the kind of amalgamation behind this it just didn't have the anchored single to really back it up i feel like the three new songs all three of the new songs are pretty wicked on here and kick ass as far as that particular kind of happens i'd have to say it's just kind of the concept that some of the the basically the lead single that was supposed to market this particular album just didn't was not as handled quite as correctly it was just not as handled in terms of the same quality pitch as like the rest of the project i'd have to say but it's a concept it's a definite above average and pretty right right this is definitely an above average and pretty relatively stellar project i'd have to say so we'll go ahead and talk about the single of this particular project once again this is some pretty relative this is some pretty relatively revolutionary type stuff i'd have to say future was like one of the bigger deals out of 2012 in the early 2010s as far as that pitch can happen this is like the train tracks being laid down as far as trap music the orientation once it got past like the mixtape phase of 2010 and 2011 as far as that pitch can went as this started to flesh out i feel like this is a necessary album as well is because it gave like a reboot of like future styles as far as I predict what's going to happen, or at least uh, continue. It gave like a quick update to kind of like a re-up and a quick update to kind of get some more of that particular sound as far as I would kind of go. Just looking after the aspect as far as being able to talk about that just within that relative pitch, I'd have to say. So it's a good concept to get some more of these just because we wouldn't have wanted Future to have been a one-hit or one-out wonder back in the day because they definitely needed to consolidate things. So the trap was... I mean, Trap was blowing up in 2011, 2012. It's just kind of the concept that there just weren't a ton of like predominant albums around this particular time. Like me trying to think of some of the folks like Gucci Mane was putting out mixtapes around this time. So he didn't really have an album out in 2012. And trying like other albums that came out in 2012, like Kanye West wasn't quite on Trap type stuff or there weren't like meek mill wasn't really doing trap rick ross wasn't really full-blown doing trap pitches like that so there just were some folks where it was basically this future and maybe like yo Gotti and like a few other casts but not as full-blown as it would be in like 2013 2014 forward i'd say so it's a good concept once again the train tracks being laid down for that so basically never end remix is the lead single this had kelly Rowland on there now the unfortunate thing about it is i don't recommend this song in particular i would have to say but it's just basically like a more glitzy kind of version. It's like a duet with Kelly Rowland as far as that particular pitch kind of happens on here. I just feel like the original Never End was just a little bit more oriented towards more just aspects of just quality pitch behind that in particular. I feel like this is at least a decent duet to be able to have some of that, but it's just not enough to really warrant like full-blown recommending. I'd have to say in particular the original one on the Pluto albums is better. I'd have to say it's just kind of the concept. It doesn't really contribute to much. Kelly Rowland just doesn't really contribute to the song that well in terms of really adding a thing in really add anything to it. She doesn't really contribute to much other than just adding like a female perspective to the particular song. I'd have to say it's a pretty good wailing type song just kind of get on here in particular. It's pretty similar to like Turn On The Lights and You Deserve It and some of those type ones, but basically it doesn't really add much to like the real benefit of anything that really strengthens the particular song. So it's just kind of the concept. I look after it. So I still, this album's pretty quality. It's just the concept that most of the new stuff on here is pretty wicked to kind of get. So we'll go ahead and talk about some of these. So basically out of 17 songs, if you don't count the future is now the intro, there were basically 17 songs on this particular product. And out of those 17, I wound up recommending 12. So the, the 
basically the 12 songs I recommend on here would be all three of the new songs, which those songs would be First Class Flights, Jealous, and My, which are pretty good pitches to get those. And one of the new remixes that's on here as well, which is Same Damn Time Remix. But I'm just going to go ahead and list them as the 12 songs. So the 12 songs I recommend on here would be First Class Flights, Jealous, My, Same Damn Time Remix, Turn On The Lights, Parachute, you Deserve It, Tony Montana, Magic Remix, I'm Trippin', Homicide, and Truth Gonna Hurt You. So basically, the thing about this project is I, I reviewed basically Pluto recently back in the winter as far as that particular pitch can happen, like mid-February, January, as far as that particular kind of happen with it, I'd have to say. So the concept of it is I'm not going to re-go in on these particular songs. My taste for this particular album is still pretty high as to what it was before. I want to say I recommend the same songs. This album is the same as it was on Pluto, just with three extra songs and the two remixes on there, I'd have to say. So basically... I want to say I recommended every song that I recommended on Pluto. I think for the most, I don't think there were songs I recommended before that I didn't recommend this time. But then also on the original Pluto, there were a few extra songs on like the iTunes, Stolex, and some of those type pitches to kind of get that are not on this particular project, which probably should have been. So you might as well get Pluto on like either the iTunes Deluxe or just like in regular format if you can find it in that Deluxe format, and then get Pluto 3D as well because basically. You know, you get you miss out on like the song Go Harder because Go Harder probably I think Go Harder would have been a nice one to have thrown on Pluto 3D just to get that. But you basically have to get two versions of Pluto. It just makes sense to get both because you're basically getting the new stuff. Even if you're basically buying this album twice for mostly same songs, there is some new stuff on here that kind of warrants that purchase. And, you know, on top of that, it's 12 years later. So it's kind of a concept that wouldn't be as big a deal as it would have 10 years ago. That's just kind of a concept. But. Basically, to talk about some of these new songs, First Class Flights is a pretty nice one. It's like a revved up kind of rowdy night type tune, I'd have to say in particular. It's like a strip club boiler, I definitely would have to say. And it's like a venue kickstarter, I would definitely feel like. And this is just good for like a typical kind of crazy night. So this one definitely reminds me of Same Damn Time, some of those type ones. I want to say there's like another one that was kind of like that, maybe Go Harder, some of those type ones. This feels like a standard kind of trap thumper, just real creeping type production, real haunting type fare. It's in a more revved up kind of strip club type sense, I'd have to say. So it's basically like Go Harder, Same Damn Time, some of those type ones. The same sort of high bravado type energy. Real nice overall pitch. Jealous, the next new song is another pretty nice one as well. This one's pretty damn similar to Tony Montana, I'd have to say. This one's like a syrupy kind of trap highlight, I'd have to say in particular. Like I was saying, this is pretty similar fashion to Tony Montana, definitely. And this is like a creeping kind of evening fair of a song, I'd have to say. And this is just good for some thrilling times. Definitely appreciate this type of one. It's just good that Future is able to crank out these particular factory made kind of trap hits as far as that kind of goes. So he definitely wasn't short on like the songwriting well as far as being able to have some more of these just within that relative pitch of just having like more songs to kind of perform and just have for more hits I'd have to say this may not be in like the single format or like getting radio airplay but it's still a pretty excellent song I'd say just the fact that Future can have this many good songs just be able to do is pretty good songs that's a good concept for that so that's a nice one but probably one of the bigger surprises on here and probably if not one of the best songs on this new edition of the album is the song My this is like a really spidery kind of wired electro beat of a song I'd have to say in particular this probably one of the best beats on the whole project especially either version pluto regular or pluto 3d this is probably one of the best produced songs on here this is a great one to smoke something to i'd have to say in particular and this is just like a glitzy outing of a song i'd have to say and this is just like some spiffy times definitely getting gussied up dressed up to really get this is definitely good for some spiffy times. Definitely getting gussied up to get crunk and pitches like that. I have to say, just some real nice snazzy type music that I suppose in particular. And it's like a turn up. The turn up factor of this particular song is pretty high. I have to say, so it's a pretty good pitch just to get this one. So yeah, definitely my is a pretty nice one. I'd have the same particular. And then same damn time remix is a real nice touch of one to kind of get in here. And a real nice touch of one to kind of get on here. I'd have to say this has Puff Daddy and Ludacris on here, two of which were kind of interesting type pitches to kind of get. I would say Puff Daddy just in kind of an awkward time for him as far as that particular kind of went, just because he wasn't quite as met. He wasn't quite making music as well. He wasn't quite making music as much in like the early 2010s. Then Ludacris was kind of in an odd spell of a time where he didn't have any albums out or pitches like that. He did have like that. Uh, gigawatts mixtape from late 2011, but I, had to say, I don't remember the full blown name of it, but it was a pretty good mixtape from late 2011. So he had something out around this time, but it's not like an album. So basically, the same damn time remix is like a vintage kind of future highlight. I'd have to say it's like a classic hit of his, just in like a remix format. Same beat, just with these new artists on here. This has Puff Daddy and Ludacris, and they add to the song greatly, I'd have to say. This is just like a rave kind of energizer to kind of get. So it's definitely like some great turn up, just strip club type song, just money throwing pitches like that, just having. Standing on couches, some of those type pitches, bottles popping, some of those type things to say in particular. So that just kind of happens to be the concept about it.
<clears throat> but basically, I'm just going to go down the list here. So Turn On The Lights is like a vintage kind of druggy nightclub malaise of a song. I, def I definitely would have to say it's a pretty good bop. So it's just another highlight to kind of get there. Turn On The Lights is just a classic future hit. This was a single off of like Pluto, the album. I'd have to say it's still a pretty good highlight to one. It's just a drug win. It's just kind of like trap R&B. I'd have to say it's initial kind of initial hit of future. Parachute's another real nice one. This has R. Kelly on here. This is a pretty breezy nightclub pizzazz with song. And at the same particular, this has radio single appeal about it. And it's just an overall Apple type one. Definitely good ladies bop. To have. Definitely good ladies bop to kind of have on here. At that same particular, this is a real nice breezy type one. Really like the appeal of that. You Deserve It's a pretty nice one. This is like a more poppy version of Turn On The Lights, I'd have to say, and it's just a pretty commercial type one. This is one that almost feels watered down just within a relative pitch, but still pulls off the vibe pretty well, I'd have to say. This is just one that kind of commercialized and modernized trap as far as a particular kind of went from its more mixtape and rugged type era of 2011 and 2010. So it's just kind of the concept of getting some of these, just modernizing it to like a modernizing it to like a more relative audience i'd have to say it's a pretty good concept it does a pretty good job with that but if you just are looking for a less commercial type of appeal this is probably not your song i'd have to say tony montana's another highlighted fashion this is one of future's initial hits it's probably one of his biggest hits around the early 2010s i'd have to say it's like a classic future hit i'd have to suppose and this is just like a mixtape boiler i would definitely have to say and it's a pretty durable song continues to have last ability i'd have to say even today i'd have to suppose in particular this is a good highlight Definitely, I would dig up some of Future's mixtapes. I have some in like my Future Reviews playlist, I'd have to say. So I'd check out the Future Reviews playlist, and this is mixtapes in general to fuck with some of these. Magic Remix with T.I. is another nice one. And, oh, yeah, Tony Montana has Drake on there, despite the fact that Future and Drake are kind of beefed, and that's a pretty good uh, early highlight of them to kind of fuck with. Magic Remix Magic Remix with T.I. is a pretty nice one as well. It's like a stock hit, I'd have to say in particular. This one's pretty similar to Tony Montana, also just like Jealous kind of was, I'd have to say. And this is just like... This is like a trap brewer. I'd have to say a particular pretty good concept for that. This one's not quite as red hot as like Tony Montana, but definitely pretty close. I mean, it's, it's not like it's not a good song. It's just kind of concept that I feel like Tony Montana just has more ferocious bite. And that's more of like the vintage classic, but they're both pretty good one-two punch to get Tony Montana Magic Remix. They're both pretty good just within that pitch. Just some mixtape type fair, just that edginess. I'm Trippin's a pretty nice one. This is like a 3-6 Mafia Edge meets like druggy fanfare of like Futures type style, I'd have to say, and this is a pretty red hot type song. It's definitely good for like some smokish type fare, just within residential type fare that 36 Mafia is normally known for, just with some of Futures more kind of spacey kind of orbit like music, I'd have to say. So that's a good concept. Definitely a great one to smoke too. Homicide's a pretty nice one. This has Snoop Dogg on there, which is more Snoop Dogg on his murder was the case type vibes, which is good to get Snoop Dogg back on that relative pitch. Definitely appreciate the concept of that. This is like a dark and brooding kind of residential night traverse. Homicide is like a dark and brooding kind of residential night traverse of a song that I'd say it's a great song to get some snacks to and smokers to. I'd have to say in particular, I'd have to suppose this. Once again, another night traverse type one like I'm tripping. Truth Gonna Hurt You is a pretty nice one as well. It's like a sullen kind of pop rap makeshift malaise of a song I'd have to say. And this is just like this this here. It's like some sullen kind of pop rap makeshift malaise I'd have to say in particular. And this is like some standard dredge I'd have to say. So if you're looking for like a trap centric type song, it's also some of that 4 o'clock PM just got done with worker class type dredge about it. This is a pretty good concert for that. It's like one of the few songs on here that has some of that makeshift type fare, but still pretty good concert. Get some of these. It's that kind of after hours type day after hours type dredge you kind of have for some of that just the malaise of winding down pitches like that so that's a good concept good look for future to have another commercialized type one that works pretty well so that's the concept of that about this particular project basically to talk about some of these songs i don't recommend on here i felt like straight up was just kind of a commercialized type one that didn't work quite as well this one is pretty similar to like uh like a, a worse version that you deserve it i'd have to say in particular just didn't really appreciate the full-blown concept of that one Neva and Remix, I already talked about not recommending that one. That one's just kind of like, um, just didn't really have much appeal beyond like the original song, which I would just, if you're already going to buy Pluto, the original, it just it, this remix just doesn't really contribute to much like the same damn time remix kind of does. I just feel like it's kind of a duet with Kelly Rowland, but it just doesn't pull off the appeal really standing out in a way that really adds or benefits to the song that much, I'd have to say. And some of these other tracks on here, like Long Live the Pimp, is still a pretty cruddy production. I'd have to say in particular, I still don't appreciate that one. I, I didn't recommend that one on the original review either. I have to say this was not a good rendition. I like that Texas Fry type stuff with like some Atlanta trap, I'd have to say. Astronaut Chick was just kind of a poor type R&B type song for like trap oriented type stuff. It's just kind of an amalgamation, just like a hood chick type song that just didn't pull up the vibes as well as it needed to. 
And then Permanent Scar was just kind of like a pop rap type song that just didn't have the appeal towards it. So it's just kind of constant. Some of these are just kind of does in like the relative sense, but it's not, this is not like a huge blunder. It's, it's not really like this is a Nash the album. Like it may not get a 10 or like a nine and a half out of 10, but I think I'm going to go ahead and score this out. Me recommending 12 songs out of 17 on here. For the most part, that's the vast majority of this project. And this is definitely an arguable class. This is definitely like an arguable classic. I'd have to say in particular, and just the concept about it, it did a lot of things, just setting things off particularly. This is a good reissue of a product that furthered futures capitalization on trap music and just overall commercial appeal that just happened to latch on to things and do it well, pretty much, I'd have to say. I mean, maybe the lead single didn't turn out as well as it needed to in particular, but I still would have to say, for the most part, these new songs really kick ass and some pitches like that. I'd have to say this is still pretty refreshing type trap music to kind of get here a lot of these are just some great strip club type numbers. a lot of these are just some great strip club type numbers and pitches like that just overall night energy and disoriented type trap r&b that just has a lot of appeal towards it and just overall this was an original factor back in 2012 this took the world by storm and it definitely continues to have that effect and like the case of just being like a vintage classic you're right i have to say so that's a concept so eight and a half out of ten I give this album, just being able to say that, pretty good pitch for that. The social score, though, I'm going to give like a 9.5 out of 10, because so I definitely feel like the social appeal of this particular project minus. Probably would have gotten a 10 if the lead single just hit heavier, some pitches like that. I'd have to say just the concept. There's a lot of good boilers on here. Once again, there's still there were basically like six singles off the original Pluto, which might as well be considered singles on this particular product. Plus, all the new songs are really wicked, and just some great outing songs to kind of have. Some of this is strip club type fare, and just... Overall night malaise and pitches like that residential type fair to smoke and grab some snacks and those sorts of things that I had to say. There's just some good ones on here. Some breezy ladies songs like Parachute and some of those type ones and probably at least like Turn on the Lights, some of those type ones in particular. I had to say some mixtape highlights like Tony Montana and Magic Remix, some of those type ones, some Night Traverse and Residential type fair like I'm Trippin' and Homicide. A good makeshift malaise of a song like like truth gonna hurt you I'd, a good makeshift malaise like truth gonna hurt you i'd have to say so that's a good that's a good enough concept so nine and a half out of ten in terms of that this is just a real good revamp of that particular pluto album i'd say it's just pretty wicked overall so in terms of the future like future is just put out a project he put out two albums with metro Boomin back in march and april i'd have to say in particular we'll have to see about those definitely going to get to some more future down the road as far as the pitch kind of albums want to get to some albums like dirty sprite 2 and the wizard and some of those type ones i just would have to say as far as that particular kind of happens definitely some of these other ones definitely there's some more mixtapes to get to i want to get to on top of that future I had tons of mixtapes that came out in 2011 there's some other ones like possibly there's even some 2010 mixtapes by future i'd have to say i'm probably going to get to at some point as well i'd have to suppose that's a good enough concept for that but yeah in term that's the basic concept about this particular album it's definitely a pretty sheer highlight i mean it may not be a full-blown classic but it's definitely an arguable classic it was a trendsetter did a lot of things right it's a multi-single type project that probably should have went multi-platinum and just made a lot of waves pitches like that just did a lot of damage on like the charts and the overall appeal just like casual type of feel as far as that particular kind of happens. So this is just an overall, for the most part, damn near almost full-blown winner of an album, I'd have to say here.